right, well, I bought a $1,000 camera, and the memory stick in it will not record, so it will not record at all. So you're going to have to deal with my very first recording of the B-reactor. Here's a map of it. Let's take a look at this side. Oh, it's okay. Some people just ran through the door so they wouldn't get in the way of my picture. You're hearing some flags up ahead. Some very nice portable toilets. There's the people who are hiding from me. So let's take a look inside. This is the entrance. Great big square boxes with rock and different sands that this air would pass up through. Down that way is towards the control room. In the original it was sand. No electrostatic. No carbon. This looks like it must have been a break room. This mechanical kind of track the large parts. Down the hallway, here's the restroom. the way things used to look, all the buildings and such. Yeah, there I am. Don't let you in here, as you can see. A workroom. These are some well, displays. You are here. We'll come back to this area later. More displays. Eugene and Matthias. Video display. The electrical room. In those days, they didn't have zip ties, so they trained their electricians to very meticulously tie the wires together with cord. And you can see they did a beautiful job of it. Quality work. Statistics on the food they used to feed everyone. Here is the reactor room. And there's the reactor. What you're seeing above me are process tubes. There's a display of process tubes. These are some of the fuel rods. They weren't actually fuel rods, they were target rods. Some of the tools that they made themselves, including some splines. Pause it if you want to read it. Here's what the reactor site used to look like. <clears throat> Almost all of this is gone now. The only thing left is the reactor building itself. Here is the Columbia River. This is the pump house showing the water into it. This is the settling pond to get all the sand and dirt out of the water. The filtration plant 
This is the chemical plant that would treat the water for use inside the reactor. This would get all the air bubbles out of the water. It would then be pumped into the reactor, which you can see is right there. These are the uh, water tanks. Water would then be pumped out of the reactor and back over to here. I'm getting this right. No, wait. The water, the hot water, that's right, would be pumped up here to the retention basin so that it could be calmed down for a little while. Get some of the short lived radiation out. There's the powerhouse. There's where the supervisor had his office. The charge house. Electrical substation down here. Helium storage. Uh, whoops, up there, sorry. Disposal basin. Helium circulation. Metal storage, that's where they put the fuel rods. They're actually target rods, but it's easier to say it that way. Up here you can see the maintenance shop. Oops. Several locations were considered for the viewing, but Hanford quickly broke to the top of the list because a river ran past you. You can see this room is pretty huge. Originally when the reactor was running, nobody would actually be in here. This is an end. You can see all the ends over there. The original pigtail you can see is wound around it. Here's the newer pigtail that they put to increase the power. Boron balls to uh, act as an emergency shutdown. This is a spacer. That's a graphite tube. The reason they put this in here is it's a masonite piece because the they put masonite all around the reactor to help protect from radiation, and it actually worked. This here is one of the fuel rods, and then this is one of the process tubes. So this would go in here, and that would go on to those two. And this is a model of the reactor. So there's the graphite tube, or the, graph um, the, the process tube, graphite uh, blocks. Up here on top, you can see some control rods, some emergency rods. They were held in place by an electromagnet, so that if they ever lost power, they would automatically drop in for the, with gravity. So these are the control rods that would move in and out carefully. This bent bar was intentionally designed to bend so that they could uh, use it as the safety rod. That's one of these up here. The horizontal rod, you can see, is nice and stiff and would go in and out. This is a process tube up here. This is the elevator. And the workers would stand up here and put the, put the rods in and out. They didn't pull them out, they pushed them through. They have the capacity to put a ribbon. There's a model of the graphite blocks. You can see there's a vacuum cleaner at the end that was used to suck out all the boron balls when somebody accidentally pushed the button to release them because he was saying, hey guys, check this out. This button releases the balls and pushed it a little too hard. Some other displays. I presume this saw is so that they can cut out rods that got stuck in the back when they were pushing things through. So let's see. Let's look at our map. Oh. Let's go down to the uh, exhaust hall. There was also, if you can see way, way up here, a curtain would drop down 
and allow air to flow underneath and up and through into these giant fans. Mm, don't think we'll go down there. That looks a little dangerous. Oh, look, all kinds of dangerous stuff in here. I'm just going to stick my camera in here and look around. Even I don't get to look in here. Look at the cave. Lots of stuff. It's radioactive. There's some stairs that go up to the top of the reactor. some of the fans. How to run them. There's a pump down there. I assume that means physically hot, because otherwise they'd probably put a radiation sign on it. Fans and equipment have been removed. See, this is where the air gets drawn through. Probably don't want to go into here. We'll take a look. More fans. More fans. An old heater. A little audio presentation about the fans. This one's just for uh, people walking through. How about a little view out the back? That is the C reactor out there. Off on the horizon, this is just a little shed here. You can see the smokestack is pretty tall. That's where the exhaust would go. Let's go around. See some more fans. Another keep out sign. These fans got really loud. Big enough to walk through. It's a whole door. Control room or control panel for the fans. Uh, I don't know what these are. These look interesting, don't they? They might be valves. Okay, we look at the valve pit a little bit. I'm going to be careful not to drop my cell phone. Used to be radioactive signs down there, but they took them out for some reason. This is one side. There were two sides, and they both sent all of the water down through a giant hole down that way. Okay, well, that's the end of part one. Part two will begin shortly.